That's why you have come to the sanctuary this morning. Your gladness will be reassured in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for your awesome presence. Thank you for your move again. Thank you for another encounter in Zion. Thank you for your power made manifest mightily in this atmosphere. You say where two or three are gathered, there you are in their midst. Therefore, we are not confused, but we are certain that you are here and we are here to meet with you. Lord, we ask that every good thing you have in stock for us this morning will come into our hands in the name of Jesus. I don't care the troubles of yesterday. I don't care the circumstances of the past. But we are glad this morning Amen. by your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, I lift up the yoke of depression, the yoke of despair, Amen. the yoke of weariness, and I infuse your people with joy from above. Amen. They go from strength to strength. Amen. Everyone that has appeared in Zion, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. it shall be so for them. They shall draw waters out of the wells of salvation. Amen. Thank you, our God and our King. I ask that sins be forgiven this morning, Amen. even by the blood of Jesus. I ask that somebody will encounter you in this sanctuary. Amen. That something will enter into somebody that will change their life and destiny Amen. all together. Yes, Thank you because we are empowered and emboldened by the words you will speak to us. Amen. Yes, the same words will cleanse us and give us an inheritance among them who are sanctified. Thank you, our God and our King. Thank you, Jesus. We start with you. Amen. We decree Amen. from the front to the back, move again. Amen. On the sides, Lord, move again. Amen. May someone see the way you see. Amen. May they hear when you speak to them. Amen. And may the power of this meeting rest mightily upon us. Amen. So many who are on the way, Lord, we ask that your steps be fasting. Yes. Uh, they join us and Eat of what we are eating this morning. Amen. Thank you for answering prayer. You, In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Therefore, we decree this meeting open. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the people say, Amen. 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 Now the pastor has just joined us. We, we saw a lot of things last Sunday. I said we will continue from the story I gave about the the dog, right? Yes. Why people resist kindness. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Why, why do people resist kindness? I call that psychological re rewiring. No. The dog has been treated kindly for some time, pampered, petted, and all that. And all of a sudden, the tongues changed, and the dog was being maltreated. Mm. The dog in the future will react differently than the way it used to react. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because an element has been introduced. Praise God. Amen. If you have any question from the past teachings, we can entertain that before I start. Still talking about um, kindness as a fruit of the Spirit.
Our question is, is pregnant. The first question I'll ask myself, do I think kindness can become a cause? give you something that you can really like to give you. Mm. But they want to drag you to the devil side. They want to use the gift to lure you mm. to himself or to herself. And he knows that you are me. And if he or she does that to you, you will come close to him or her. Yes, and in doing that, you join him or her in her group of cousins or group of Mm. Maybe you can use that to turn you against the other person that mm. ordinarily sure you wouldn't even have anything, any problem with. But because this person, because I have problem with her, and she's friendly with her, and I want her to join me to help her, I can use gift to draw her to support to myself. Because they say the best friend of my enemy is my enemy. Is my enemy. So you see it happen all the time. I get angry with somebody, and I want somebody that I go out with or is my friend to also get angry with that person, and that person doesn't want to. The easiest way to do it is to use gifts, sure. to lure, to buy. You can buy somebody's heart with gifts. So that's the trust. That is not the, that's not kindness. You know you are not showing kindness, <laughs> but it looks like kindness. So that is a negative one. Yeah. It looks like kindness, but you are doing doing that for a certain purpose. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I have another dimension that why I ask that. Can one be cursed through supernatural forces to give up all that he or she has to the extent that he or she remains in poverty? Anything that gets into his or her hand. Praise 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Why don't we also look at it this way? I don't know about giving everything you have. But I will look at it from this way. Yes, yeah, somebody could, if you are not spiritual a lot, they can use a manipulation, demonic manipulation to <laughs> capture your heart to continue to give to that person. Whatever the person picks up the phone calls so that it is, you know, even when you <coughs> die, you make a way to go. But to give everything you have out, that would be a, a very serious stretch. I think it would be easier instead of uh, saying giving everything you have, the enemy can come into your life to devour, devouring the that make your business fail, that make you lose your job, makes it really difficult to get a job, yeah. and so on and so forth. But if your money keeps on coming and you're gonna give 100% out, that would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is an act that is scary. I'm taking myself, for example, when I gather a little bit, and within this small time, I be getting calls from back home. This, 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 that, this, that, this, that, this, that, mm -hmm. and by the time, I answer to those needs, I barely have nothing left. Mm -hmm. And it will go a long time, then I gather again before I know. The call is coming in. Stop picking Nigeria calls. No, it's not about, it's not about the stop picking Nigeria calls. It's about if you know what's wrong with you and you don't take steps to, to curtail it, then you are stupid. That's the truth. Because it used to be like that with me and my wife some years back. Uh -huh. That every Easter, December, uh -huh. day, a two family back home, when I say family, there are a lot of people uh -huh. in this family uh -huh. will share, give you some share, give, give. Uh -huh. By the time we finish, we spent three, four, five thousand dollars. And this was money that we did not have. It got to a point one day after I was praying and fasting and uh, we sent some money to the same people and they called me and said, somebody said, come on, Pete. Oh, oh you said, come on, this amount. 500 dollars. Oh. I sat down like this and said, oh my God. Oh. This is the end of that nonsense. Amen. It's been five, six years now. Oh. I told my wife, we will never from today Say it die. Five years apart. I only identify needs mm -hmm. and meet you. those needs That's if I right. feel like. Mm -hmm. Not because they want me to meet them. Mm -hmm. But for anybody, and they know, since five years, nobody calls and say, No, we didn't see money. Who born you? Mm -hmm. you try that nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know what I go through. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand one thing. I cannot leave my needs in the U.S. here, or met, mm -hmm. and take my hard-earned money I to give it. to somebody in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. I don't pay my bills, mm -hmm. I don't take care of my children, yet I take money I'm and go to back. Nigeria to give to people. Mm -hmm. My primary responsibility, the Bible says whoever does not provide or it's cannot household. provide yeah. for his household is worse than if it is. My primary responsibility is my household First. and then the household of God. Amen. Family outside, brother, sister, I can help them when I have. But I cannot leave my needs here in my household or bed because I want to help my brother, sister. Mm -hmm. You go home today, they live better than me. Yeah, yes, so Far better. Yes, Praise the Lord. Amen. I will take it from there and you know, extra what we talked about last Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, I said there are ways, lead more steps to identify kindness. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. And then you find out that I said that you are kind, that doesn't excuse you from planning. Mm -hmm. That you are kind, that, that doesn't mean that there's no yes. time. No, the absent from your dictionary. Praise the Lord. So, from the definition I gave about kind, I said it's the opportunity to serve. So, there are certain opportunities you weigh and you say no. That's, that's really understandable, like the story you just painted this morning. Praise God. Amen. But, again, 
before I talk a little about you know why people resist kindness, there's another aspect of kindness that is beyond serving other people. It's helping others discover what is already in them. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Now, the word of a wise man, uh, the Israeli Benjamin, said, the greatest good you can do for any man is not to give away your riches. That's very good scripture, supposed that in First Timothy 6. Amen? He says, but to show them their own riches. Amen. Amen. I don't have time this morning. I would have gone down and picked scriptures that will explain what I'm talking about this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. If I have time, I'll come back to it. But let me talk about why people resist kindness. Why? Let us look at um, Proverbs 13 and verses 12. God. That's Amen. short but powerful scripture. Hope defer. Expectations that were not met. I'll explain what I mean by that. You see, after a series of trauma, let me use um, relationship for example. And then the person goes through one, two, three, and then almost like the person is drained, don't want to talk to anybody. You think people are bad. You know, if you hear ladies saying all men are bad, you know, that's a common premise or assumption. Somehow, in their own thinking, that statement is correct. But generally speaking, it's not. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Because for you to see good, you must what? You must see good in your environment. You must see good in your circumstance. If you keep seeing negatives, the negatives will definitely come to you. And then all of a sudden, maybe they have prayed, maybe God gives them another chance again. And then there they go. This one is doing this, 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 this. It's going to end up like the other people. What are they doing to themselves? They are resisting kindness. They are drawing from their past and bringing it into the, the, the present. And that's fighting the door God is opening for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you have something to add to that? Past failures, past mistakes, past trauma. I'm, I'm sharing with you the, how people become resistant to kindness. Experiences. Praise the Lord. These things tend people to become depressed. They don't see the glimpse of the faces of others who are extending their hand to them. They just assume, it's called an assumption, that everybody out there is bad. And therefore, it's better they stay on their own. They retract to their share. And yet, you see some of them praying, God, do this, do that. It doesn't work like that. You must first of all, what? Forgive yourself. You must first of all, grow past the mistake, grow past the failure. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, I said one of the ways to be kind to yourself, remember we said you can be kind to yourself, kind to other people, kind even to animals. I said one of them is to keep adding value to yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two is the ability to what? Forgive yourself because mistakes will come and you make some of those mistakes. Some of them may be huge mistake, but for you to receive kindness, especially to yourself, you must forgive yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember I said one of the reasons in the past teaching why mercy is given is why? Because of our frailty. Because we are weak. That's why God gave mercy. That mercy does not what? Endure forever, right? Even though it's a God of mercy. Amen. 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 And you heard me say that mercy is not obtained in heaven and all that. Amen. Do you have any question? I uh, do. Let, let, this is a kind of yeah. You said mercy does not endure forever, but that's not what the Bible says. Mercy endures forever. God's mercy endures forever. But in the context of the operation of man on earth, 
mercy of God on earth is not forever. But God is from everlasting to everlasting. His mercy does not what? Change. change. But in the context of the earth and how God deals with men, mm. there's a time limit for mercy. Is there any other question? I don't. So how do you define the time limit? Because it's still confusing. Is it when the person dies that the mercy of God ends? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. So for a particular person, if the if the person dies, it means the mercy of God has ended because after death It's judgment, right. That is one way to you know entertain that. Okay, you have to also understand not not necessarily uh, this after death. You see, God said, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. Yeah, the Bible said the, the mercy of God endures forever. You, but you have to understand something. If I continue, the Bible said, do I continue in sin so that grace may abide? Say, God forbid. What is the meaning of that? It means that if I continue, a time will come when grace will cease. Right. The same thing with mercy. I continue in a, in a particular act, or do it, this act today, God gives you mercy. Next week or next month, next year, I continue doing it. God shows mercy. God shows mercy. You think that if I continue doing it forever, God will continue showing mercy till I die? But is that where chastisement comes into play? The time will come when God will lift his hand off me, mm -hmm. even though I'm still alive. But even at the point of stress, if you ask for forgiveness, the mercy of God still steps in. If you ask for forgiveness, but there are people that die without having the ability know. to ask mm -hmm. for forgiveness. Oh. Many people I, die without that opportunity. Accident. They could be sick, they have no opportunity. They cannot put their mind, even in their mind, their mind is gone already. They can't even communicate with God. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why we don't wait till then. Wait and nobody knows when you're going to die. And people how? go to the street, are hit by a car, or something happens, and they're gone. I tell people that the, the day you die, is the day of the, the coming of Jesus for you. Don't wait till the last day that the trumpet will sound. Because the day you die, Jesus has come for you that day. So, but, yes, most of God endure forever, but if you continue, a time come when God will lift his hands of mercy off you because he's given you several opportunities. He has shown you mercy upon mercy upon mercy. That's the problem. And also, the Bible says something about um, you can commit whatever sin can be forgiven, but if you commit any sin of blaspheme, the Holy Spirit it cannot be forgiven. In that case, there's no mercy for that person. We talk about that some time ago, yeah. and what the, the sin of the Holy Spirit is. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And you blessed this morning. It's in, it's in that question. Yeah. There is something I need to add before we go, because our time is up. One key thing, very important thing, it still boils down to what Mr. Taylor was saying. Do not consider yourself a Messiah for somebody. The major problem that some people have is that you look at yourself as a Messiah. You are not a Messiah. No, you are not the one to die on the cross for that person. You can help that person. You can bless somebody. But if you get to a point where you consider yourself a Messiah, you have missed the point. And that is when, uh, that's when it, it will get to a point, certain kindness you show will not be beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. Because you are now look, turning yourself into a Messiah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll go over these things quickly and give you something powerful that will help you. You see, it's good we want to change the world. But we cannot change the world. Uh -huh. That's that's pregnant. That statement is pregnant. You cannot change the world the way you want to change the world. But you can begin by changing something about somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore, I said there are four ways to be kind to yourself. I said one, you add value to yourself. Two, you forgive yourself. Uh -huh. Three, you do what? You enlarge your ministry. Like Paul said in Romans 11, 13. Number four, you stay connected to the source. Your source of nourishment. Wherever you are drawing from, 
Because the anointing you dishonor will dishonor you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So this morning we have seen why people resist kindness. We have seen how we can add value to ourselves in the previous teaching. The next time we will we'll find out why and how kindness, the ability to add value, produces favor. Praise God. Amen. And then we go from there. We discover how people who were originally large in heart, they sacrificed a lot and they came to a point where it's almost like they lost everything. But that stuff or that circumstance or situation is what is called discovering the riches in them. Whereby you, you give up a large part of your life for the cost of one thing, like a calling. And therefore, later on, you recover all. Praise the Lord. I'll conclude with this scripture just to get you to be what I'm talking about this morning. Second Corinthians chapter 6. And I'll tie that to Philippians 3. Second Corinthians 6 before we go this morning. Verse 10. If you are there, read for us. Praise God. He forsook where he was coming from. He forsook his career and all that. He said, now he has become poor. He has sold himself out for the service of humanity. He's helping people discover their own riches. That situation is that he's becoming poor. He has constrained himself so that he can become a blessing. That revelation is an act of kindness. This morning you will move in the direction of that revelation. You will not just be thinking about yourself, you think of how to better the lives of people. But remember, there's a clause from his question that there are times you have to judge when to say no, which is very important. Amen. God bless you this morning. Amen. You will increase in the knowledge of God Amen. and you will get to your next level. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Good morning, church.